Well, I'm here down on the Berry Fisheries main lake. Um, just a few more trips here. They're going to get maybe I might get two trips in, and that'll be it finished. So I've basically been trying to catch bream. I've had two bream. Um, it's an area that's not known for bream because they don't really seem to have the matches down this end. But the bailiff came around. And he said it's more of a sort of carpy area. Um, I've just lost the carp on the inside here. So what I'm going to do is now, whatever the time is, about ten past seven. I'm going to bring my two bream feeder quiver tip rods in here. I've already rigged up my other two carp rods and I've baited up one, two, three. Bit of ground bait in, uh, some boilies going in there. Been, I think I'll hold on to the sweet corn uh, for later and then I'll have a cook up and you guys can join me um, hopefully with the fish attached on the end. So basically I'm switching over from bream fishing, I wish I've had two at the present time to cart for the night. I've actually seen a couple of carp move on the surface, but not for the last two or three hours. It's gone very, very, very dead. It's a peculiar sort of purple colour to the water over the other side. It's like a green algae and it's gone like turquoise. I can't, you know, I don't think I've ever seen a colour of water like that before. So I'm going to leave these rigged up for tomorrow morning. All the geese have gone, which anybody who's fished the main lake, <laughs> any lake, if you fish at night, the <laughs> main lake, it can be an absolute living nightmare. Not for the geese, they're having a conversation, aren't they, between themselves, they just don't, they have no off switch. Beautiful evening, I've just picked a little high pressure slot uh, between rainstorms. You might switch the fish off, but there's been a lot of guys fishing during the day on the smaller lakes and they tell me it's been very, very hard. In fact, the last week's been tough. Uh, there's also a big carp lake over the back there where they get 40 pounders and that. Well, or rather at the moment they don't get 40 pounders. There's a couple of people there who are talked to by the shop and they, uh, they've struggled. I think one had two fishing for four days. Four days and four nights. 24, 48, it's 96 hours of fishing. I've had two bream in and lost one carp in four hours fishing and I feel hard done by. Let's get these baits out. I'm sure you've seen it before, I've pre-tied these up. I keep them in a spare one of these tubes so they're dry. Some of these from the last carp fishing trip, to be honest, I see no reason why I can't use them. Well, I am. Now last time I fished in a swim, I got fished really close in by this bush, which is why this rod's out there. First rod out, and round on the right cast it towards that bridge. Out in the middle, I don't know if I did have one or not, I can't remember. I've been doing so many films, filming here, that I can't remember what it was, but definitely left and right was the place. The only thing I would say is, the wind has picked up. It's not going to bother me at all tonight, it's certainly casting. So there I've got my rig safe lead business I've got my um, bait boilies a little mesh bag in a dissolvable bag um, I've already chucked some bait out but I'm gonna have something to eat and then give it a serious caning so I'll turn this round you see where I'm casting no secrets screw all places here <laughs> basically I don't know where I'm fishing so there's no <laughs> I just throw it out there and hope So the sun's off the water now, which is why I've packed up the bream fishing of the carp. You can see the, the light just there. So all this is in shadow now. The sun is way behind the trees. It is drawing in, as we say, the nights are drawing in, so I've got to put the time in because I'm not doing the cold weather stuff because I've done all that 40, 50 years ago. 
Um, nothing to prove there. I've got one down here, but where those little twitchy bubble bits are, hopefully it's a fish. I've got one out straight out there, you can see the line. Okay, and this other one here, I'm watching up this tree, I'm just clipping the tree, I'm aiming for the bridge down there. And that's out that way. But as idyllic as it looks, I don't see any bubbling, which is what you want to see, Carl. And you want to see movement on the surface. But for me, anyway, it is a, it is a night. It seems to be a night water. So it's nice and peaceful at the moment, other than all the airplanes from Gatwick. Um, I think there's one or two guys on. I don't know if they're all night. Sometimes they have these sort of umbrella type things that look like a bivy and they're not overnight. It's like a, a day bivy, if you like. But th yeah, they're quite a good idea, actually. I think they are pretty good. The only thing I've got to watch is this. I nearly broke, broke my anchor last time. I nearly broke my ankle in that last time, jumping out here and I went down. I crashed over there, I thought I broke my hip. So, just a very odd bit of movement there. I'm just gonna have something to eat. I think I'll have a cook up now. And of course you wanna know what the luxury cuisine is tonight. Right, let's get organized. You possibly think down there that it's sweet corn, but it's not, that's leftover hook baits. Um, one thing I did do, I got Mike to let me have this low cooker, which I find is much better for balancing stuff off it, and it's got a wide spread of legs. The other one was tall and actually had the burner unit on top up here. You've probably seen it, and I find they're very wobbly, especially for frying pans, which are wider, but this should be okay. So in there, I'm going to put on recommendation from one of our people, but a variation of the theme, scotch broth, and into that, I'm going to boil, bubble, and probably burn some hot dogs. Yes, at the same time. Here we go. It's not as thick as I thought it would be. Good mate, Baxter's, I think they're good mate. Now, in here somewhere, hopefully, wifey's given me I've got a blue pack in there, about another month we won't need any blue packs, we need uh, thermal insulation. Some of these, the pack has already been raided. Really good barbel bait. And all I do is just look, just break them up. Drop them in. It's survival, this is... High living, high end living, this is where that one nearly went. You could cut them, but if you've seen what I've cut with my bait knife, you wouldn't, uh, you wouldn't want to know. There we go. Even got a wooden spoon for the Teflon Society, otherwise it'd be in my case. I know it's got a sparker, but I've got a lighter. There we go. There's a little bit of wind coming from the back. And I normally got a little flap I put around there, windbreak, but I don't think I need it. So I'm hoping tonight to get some action here, other than with the Scotch Boss soup and. Oh, oh, oh. Jesus, wet. I put a camera in my mouth. I mean, oh man, let's turn this off. Sorry about that, guys. I'm going to try and get the camera on my head without dropping it. Well, it would have been a good cook up, but you guys know what it's like when I'm fishing. Anything can happen, like picking up my other line. He's kiting way, way round there. I'm going to put the rod really down low. He has really, really gone inside. Let me click off while I sort this, guys. Oh, he's right in there. I've got the other line cleared. 
so we got a chance. What was that? I was twanging away and he's going back, he's going back. Oh, come away. Well, I've got catfish drag on here, people. Be a bit careful. Oh, God, he's brought in. I don't want him on a stagey. Let's have a look at him. Oh, my goodness, that's a lump. I'm going to knit this straight away, if I can. Mainly because I want my tea. Oh no, don't go in there. He wants in the staging. Why oh, it's a big fish. I can't turn, I just need to roll him. Got him, I got him, I got him. <laughs> that boy is a wire. Oh yes. Now, I don't want to kick over my grub here. I've got to pick him up and get him in there. Bear with me. It's a madhouse. I think you might even got the take there. Only get that right top sorted. That is twisted up beyond belief. Where's that twisted? There's not many takes I've got on camera, hopefully I have. That's over 20 pounds, people. I'm putting that one and getting in with it. I'm saying that's a 20. That's a lovely fish. Oh my word. Now don't do the nutso bit. The old common going nuts bit. Let's give this one a quick way, boys. Yeah, he's gotta be 18s if he's not 20. 22, oh God, 22 four is that? I knew it was a 20. Whack, I do, what a beaut. 22 four, and I was just having my soup. Oh, it's got a big belly to it. I fear it's gonna go nuts. It's only just off the mat. Oh, what a beauty. First fish of the trip. Please, more of the same and some soup as well. Oh, well pleased with that. 22, four. Let's get him straight back. That's a real heavy fish, that one. Goodness me. What a beauty, look at it. It looks ginormous there, don't they? Big tail. Let him recover there. Big back on it. Come on, buddy. Don't go under the stage in a way. That was a result. Whew. That was a bit of a tear ass panic, wasn't it? Halfway through putting my soup on. Right. We're to back out again. I've got to tie some more bags up. Let's get this soup on. That was exactly, I don't need any of those fake takes. It's totally awesome fishing, we don't have to impress anybody. 
we just go fishing, totally catching fish with the most basic method we can. And the most basic food we can as well. If you have tins and stuff, I'll either put them inside uh, the barrow thing there or up on the top because I don't want to encourage rats because some of the rats you get on fisheries are the size of uh, Dobermans. Well, they would be if they eaten bits of boilies left over, wouldn't they? Let's face it. It's a wonder you don't get a rat this big with a big gut like you see those carp, you know, big drooping gut like that. So a rat's about this big and it goes down like that. In fact, his legs are so small, his belly's dragging on the floor. So you know when it's a real good super rat because it's going to have no fur on the belly where it's dragged across the floor <laughs> as it's walking. Well, I'd love to see another one of those takes like that. Just hope it's on camera. Come on. That smells as though it's running out. So always a job to get temperatures right with these uh, canisters. Are they very hot or not? Something somebody did say, and I've taken into consideration. Graham, why are you cooking it in the saucepan and then putting it on a plate or in a billy can? It makes sense, doesn't it? Just eat it straight out of the saucepan. I suppose it's just because you... You know, if my wife served the dinner and she, and she put the roast beef joint on a tray straight out of the oven and put it down and said eat it. I probably would eat it, but it wouldn't look good in front of the people that, you know, eat fishing. The people that are eating with us at the dinner table, would it wouldn't look good. So I guess it's just a politeness thing is that you think I'll cook in that and I'll serve it on a plate or in my case, an army billy can. In this case, I am going to put that in my tum tum with no billy can straight out of the scalding hot saucepan. That is my office for the night. I cannot believe I got a 20 pounder. I had a 20 pounder the other day. Well, a couple of weeks ago actually. And I've fished here years and never had a 20 pounder. It's weird, it is weird. Don't get me wrong, I figure I'm owed because I don't go fishing for big carp. So I'm very grateful uh, for whatever comes along. Come on, getting hungry now, it's getting dark. I'm not actually quite sure what the moon's doing tonight. I'm not in love with full moons, I've mentioned it before. I'm not, two things I'm not in love of. Canals, full moons, hot dogs. <laughs> You've got to laugh, aren't you? I actually quite enjoy my own company. It's quite handy having no friends. The only friends I've got are you guys on YouTube. So I met quite a few people today wanted pictures and stuff, so I have no problem with that. What I generally find with these is it sticks to the bottom and the top is lukewarm. One thing I've just realised is um, I've got that scotch broth soup and I've got half segments of hot dogs in there. So what do I eat it with? A spoon or a fork? I think it's got to be both, hasn't it? I don't know, my cuisine does leave a bit to be desired. Yeah, tell us in the comments page, all you carp guys that do these long sessions. I don't do long sessions, I do one night and that's me done. Maybe the next day, but not for carp, for something else. If you're doing a session, two or three sessions, what do you eat? What do you guys eat if you got, let's say what most people do, would they do like a 48 hour session? Is that the average for the carpies? 48 hours, I've got to say yes. So you've got two nights worth of meals. What do you cook on those two nights that you find you actually enjoy? Let us know on the comments page. Oh, we're away. That definitely needs tuning down. There's ants down there on bits of sweet corn. Together with the heat from this, they must think they're in Bombay. The thing is, these things say, these cans normally say, simmer, do not boil. But these little cooking stoves, they don't do simmer, do they? They don't do simmer, they do out or boil. That guys is about as low as it gets. I'll probably get a better better cook putting the lighter there. I can't, I can't simmer, I can't simmer. Or it'll go out and then I'll gas myself. 
quite a nice bream I could have done with this when I was bream fishing and he's taking a big boilie look at that I'm gonna try not to net him but it is a very nice bream really there he is he's got a right peculiar mouth there we go Mr. Bream can go back. I don't want you waking me up during the night, thank you. The upside is I've got my broilie back. I'm going to finish my soup now. I'll try and get a picture of this one for you people, hang on. Well, that was a nice bream, but just round the left, I'm sitting here tying some bags up and it's just like washing machine foam. Let me show you if they're still feeding. If they're carp, I fully expect this one to get dragged off the rest. But it's just, oh, you probably won't see it here. I'll get down and there's loads of bubbles. I think they're probably bream that's in there. I can't see them being that many carp there, I may be wrong. I'd like to think they are. There's a lot of bubbling going on there, a lot. They're gonna get some more food in a minute, more dindins. of the solid bag but that's what I've come up with and I haven't bothered with the corners because I just want to get it out there. There's something wrong guys. I just put the kettle on. We're in again.
One of those crazy kinds. Double figure fish. I'm not disturb him too much. I'm not going to weigh this one. It is, as you can see. Probably, I don't know, 12 to 14. Good size one. Let's get it back and get that kettle on. I don't know how many geese are coming in guys but I'm gonna keep my head down and get in a bivy. Holy cow. There's thousands of them. Don't come in my swim please. Well I have to get the old hoodie on. Uh, in a minute. It's not cold, it's just cool. I think what I have noticed this year, and obviously the arms are bare, and that tells his own story, there's a lack of mosquitoes. I don't know whether it's a drought or what. I don't know if you guys found it as well. Less mosquitoes. What about people fishing in other parts of the world? Do they still get the same mosquitoes? Not the same ones, obviously they don't they don't commute with British Airways or something. But you know, are they getting the same problems in other countries as well? I've got my cold cup of tea, I'll have to get beeps and I'm getting breamed now, lots of little beepy bites, lots of them. What an evening, I can hear the guys over on Temple talking. No excitement or splashes though, so I figure I'm doing okay over here. Just that mad flurry to start with them two fish. I mean if I don't get another one, 22-4, wow, well pleased. I'm feeling this rod's going to go off this left hand rod in the bushes down, down here because with all those bubbles and all that activity and those bream in there, I know the bream are on the ground bait and I've had that one bream that's taken a, a, or a bit of one of the big boilies but you know that's going to attract a carp surely and he's going to shoulder them out of the way and suck all those boilies up and boom off it goes. Well, that's, 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 that's what I think anyway. The geese, I'm not sure whether they went that way. Hopefully they just kept going. And I suppose, look, coming into autumn, it's not even autumn, it's late summer, when I'm making the films, obviously, because all the films go up at different times. Um, they're going to start zoning over in, do they call them skeins? Is it a skeins? Gaggles? Whatever they are. I think it's a skein of geese when they're in a big V formation for the winter. But I, you know, from the last couple of trips I've had here, I've noticed a lot more, a lot more geese activity. So they must be knowing the, you know, the weather's going to change. Pleasant enough. I'll tell you what they do say. If there's music on, that's fine. You drop off to sleep. If you can hear what's being said, oh, your newsread, and we all do it, I'll drop off in the chair sometimes watching droning politician or something who wouldn't go to sleep. And that's because your brain hears it, but if it's, if it's a mumbled background, you can't quite distinguish it. The brain apparently won't let you go to sleep because it's trying to, you know, your brain's trying to tell you what is this gobbledygook in the background. It's trying to understand what the words are, and if it can't hear it, I can hear that. If it can't hear it properly, then it, it keeps you awake, so you're better off almost leave the radio on, TV on, or having a constant noise with somebody talking. Sorry, sorry bloke at the back there. All my talking, if I sent you to sleep, mate, I'm sorry about that. Well, at least your dog's watching us anyway. Good on you, mate. It's an Australian dog. Lights just come on up at Temple. A headlight just come on at Temple. I wonder if it's got a take. Probably fed up with this bloke talking over the other side and having the old school beepers that everybody can hear. Well, it's gone a bit quiet now. It's about a quarter of ten, I think, like that. It really caught me on the hop by the uh, evenings are coming in. Uh, something I might not have shown before, which is dead handy, are these little ones. A torch. You've got the head torch here. On, off, three powers, like that. But it's a little small one. And it's got a lanyard on the belt, you know, clip on your belt. And it's got, if you can see this, 
little rubber strap around the outside, just like that. It's a sort of safety one, really. And you hold that tap so you don't ever lose the cap. You see, if I pull that off, you see the cap still had that held there. And wait for this. What is inside is tiny, but I've had this for a long time, and I use it quite a bit for like working and stuff. It's a little headlamp, and. It's only red, it's only red. It's got the red light there, see it? It's got a strobe flasher, flashing red, in case you want to stand in the middle of the motorway and pretend to be a traffic light. Strobe white. And, yes, a head torch. Look, I've got it between my fingers, it's tiny. It is. Ridiculously light. Right as well. Look, it's just got it upside down actually. Got a little angle flap to it. No, you know me, people, I'm not selling them. I just thought it's interesting as I'm making this film, it's got coming into uh, night fishing stuff. And you can alter it around, obviously, and tie rigs up like this. But obviously, where it, it goes to red you could probably just talk, if some people are paranoid about lights doesn't bother me at all because commercial fishing and stuff like that they're all a lot of places are commercially used to it you can have you know diff different settings like this if you want i'm not saying it's a big distance power one no it's not at all it's 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 it's, it's close and it's what's called a wide beam so it's not concentrated but it's dead handy also people are out in the garden at night walking dogs at night this one is really handy so I'm just mentioning it, it's, look at the size of it, it's tiny. It folds up, goes in the little pouch, and if you do get caught out in the dark, why not have that on your belt? And you know you can get home safely, you can map read, you can look at the phone and stuff like that. Just a bonus thing, I thought I'd mention it. Me, I use a cheapo £10 thing there, to feed batteries in it. it does me for what I do. Another fish. I have to put the old hoodie on soon. What a night. Hope it's not going to be one of those beautiful nights that's dead with no fish in it, though. You know, just it's a lovely night, but. Oh, guys, I just had one pull off the hook then, so I'm going to drop out again. And off. Why not? Good night. It's three in a row. God, last time the boiler was like tangled up somewhere around the uh, hair. I was trying to sort that out. And uh, just the way they're taking, it's three in a row. Well, a bit annoying losing them like that. They're just coming off the hook. I'm getting through the uh, the old mesh docking. Not many more left. I'm just putting in about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven in that go, so I haven't really got many left. I've got some solid bags there. I'm not losing sol using uh, solid bags, I have to say. I'm sort of doing okay with this mesh stuff. I'll have to make sure I get some for tomorrow. God knows what the time is, two in the morning. It's very, very quiet, very still. Still on the two carp. Three, three just come off the hook. So that's my little parcel there. Trying to stockpile all there. Basically, I keep them in that dry tube. That way I can get out straight away, dip them in that gunk, cast out, back in action. Ready for the next one to lose. I think I've only got about three bags left. 
Oh well. It's lovely still evening. But they're just taking really weird. I don't think I've lost three in a row like that. For a long time. One, two, three, four, five. Maybe I'll do six. That could be what it is. I've been putting seven in. It could be bad luck. Never know. There we go. Two beeps. Could be a bream. The right hand rod, which was the best area last time, is just, it's just dead this time. That's weird. Shows you how things change. Just when you think you got it taped. No. All change again. About two more baits. Oh, I would have liked to have got at least another couple out of it. This is what it is. I'm sure all you guys have been there like this before, losing, losing fish. Still annoying, still doesn't make you wonder why. Last time. Count, Smith, count. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, these bag, these ones you can actually stretch, stretch the bag, you force sort of force stuff out. And when I've put them underwater to look at them. I know it's when you wind them up tight. Where did that one go? You have to ask yourself: Did I put in six, or did I put in seven? Well, carp, do you feel lucky? Oh God, I've got eight in there. Not many hours tonight. That's it, I'm, I'm out of stocking. Don't last very long, do they? Right. The camera's fallen over, bashed itself. The light's been over twice, it's now smashed. That's why I'm in here. Because it's um, busted, so I've got probably no chance of getting any action for you. Because GoPro's no good in the dark. Wow, a long last one's in the net, boys. This one's a mirror. Got him unhooked. I'd say he's around the 15s. Let's get him out of the net. There's actually 17 pounds that mirror. Frisky 17 as well. Yes. Let's get it straight back. And now I'm happy. I've got my three. And the light's broken and it's still working, so that's good. I've no idea what time it is, so I don't business a watch. I can't put the phone on because I haven't got much uh, battery left. I think I'm going to recast all three because I've sort of not been happy with where they are. And I know I've got the fish, but that's the one in the middle. That's the easy one to cast. The ones on the two sides are not. And the right hand one, zippo on that. So I think I'll use the last of those bags up and uh, heave out.
or again people. Calling him about 13, 12 to 13s. I'll get him straight back. Oh, I'm saving a battery on the other uh, the camera, and that was, um, I can't tell you, two minutes after I baited up. And to be honest, it makes you wonder is that worth that three casts with fresh baits? I think it was. This one's a mirror, and it is. There we go. It's 17 again. I'm going to get this one straight back because he's really frisky. There we go. 17 pounder. <sighs> dawn and I got the first, uh, got the first dawn one. I actually got it in the bushes. I don't know how long I'm going to keep him on for, but I got him out of the bushes, so I'm lucky, very lucky. And it's not over yet. Wow, nice common. Wow, sixteen and a half. It's one of them crazy commons. One left and he's, he's moved that round there. I don't trust these commons. It's a good fish, 16 and a half. See what I mean? Can't trust commons. Never trust them. There we go. What a session I've had. I said 11 I've hooked. And this is number seven. Every single fish is double figures. Two of us 17s. This one's 16, whatever, and a 22.4. And I'm filthy. And that I had not well and truly sold down the river asleep. I heard the single tone, I've no idea what time it is. Dave in the tackle shop was very much an officer and a gentleman and bought me around a cup of tea together with sugars. At some ungodly hour of quarter past six in the morning. He said he gets up at four. I'm gonna to have to watch this one, he's gonna go left if I'm not careful. Bear with me. Oh. 
He's going to go off again in a minute. Too late, pal, you're in. That's a common, nice common car. What a setting. Comes out and get the boilie back again. And there it is. Perfect. A lovely looker. Just look at that. Prime English estate carp. 12th one. And now the digger's starting, so that's going to be the end of that. Well, that was one. Tough old fishing session, wasn't it? That's a lot of fish, I call. Double figure fish and that big one. Well pleased with that. And what I'm off to now, I pop down, because Mike, let me show you a piece. Had a tree come down in his woodland. Well, he didn't have it though. He bought the woodland, the tree was down there. And I'm currently in the stages of looking for what they call sported wood. See all the marks in it? And I cut this with his chainsaw. Now he's doing blocks like this not the sporting wood, this is a beach, but he was been using ash, I think it's on his old ash tree, to do axe handles. He's had his own English axe made. And what we did was run down to Somerset, and this is a little few clips of how we ran down there. But it is stunning. Right, look at this for a view, guys. This is Somerset for you, out there. Yeah, I'll pass that camera over here to a real camera. Look at that view there. Absolutely stunning. The person in the back is doing the filming, not me, it's on private road anyway. So what we're doing is coming down to drop your axe handles off, yes. aren't we right? Yeah, we've got the wood in the back here for the next batch of axes. And we're just coming through into the, the estate now, which is where Joe's Forge is, Thornwood Forge. It's a beautiful estate if you look out. Absolutely stunning. We got the day for it, a January cold, bitingly cold day. Yeah. Trying to beat the weather and get the wood delivered. And it's absolutely stunning set. And this is all his estate, yeah? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's amazing. Lovely. Really good backdrop. And in case anybody doesn't know, uh, Mike's doing a totally English axe. If you describe it, Mike, tell him yeah. it's sold out, wait for this, in three hours. So it's just a, it's just a, a more of a hatchet, really, but the wood is English ash here from my woodland. Uh, from a big old 100 year old ash tree um, that come down in a storm one winter and then the so that's we we bring that down here the axe head is all forged here in somerset and then we the leather is from an oak bark tannery the last oak bark tannery in britain um, that's also in Somerset, that's where the leather for the sheath comes from and the leather sheath is also made here in Somerset. Have you got a film up on it, your channel Yeah, yet? so it's up on my channel, yeah. It's all uh, totally English made, handmade in England. Imagine living here, look at the front guys, go through yeah. the front there, stunning. And they're working down here. Yeah. So what a place to work. What do you mean? Yeah, it's lovely. Does it get any better? Look at that view there, yeah, it's lovely. Look at the over here on the right. Are these starlings, Mike? I don't, I don't know. Really know. Go see you probably won't see on the GoPro. Probably, yeah. I said they will. They're like absolutely on the wire. So we're going to go round to the left. A lot of hammering going on here. Yeah, 
Oh, they're nice. That's a nice. Yeah, yeah just on the bus now. And then we'll have some nice plastic handles that go on there. Oh, really? And what would they be for? Individual people or? Uh, uh, they're for. Uh, what was it? It's an order. Yeah, yeah, an order for a company called All Day Goods. Um, so are these. Like, oh, wow. Chef knives for yeah, All Day Goods. And they make uh, like recycled plastic handles for them. Yeah. So we make them just the blades. These are going to help. For the first batch, I wouldn't have to make it in Wow, it's a heat off of that, isn't it? It does, yeah. Uh, really? I'll keep it for quite a while. It's quite a free, well, they sell it quite That's a like a fire brick thing, is it? Uh, yeah. Is it a special material? It's like it's ceramic good. tiles on the bottom. Very, and then, very good. Yeah, like fire cement yeah, on the outside. Yeah, like ceramics, basically. Yeah, I can imagine. Yeah, they, they seem like a bit of a problem. Okay. Ready to try it out, Frank? The hand will wait. I'll give you a quick look at that. That would be a good one. If I got my jumper just caught on there. Yeah, <laughs> you know about it. <laughs> This one's alright, you just get shiny. Yes, that's right. Yeah. Some of it is a bit more split than the last batch. Okay. Well, it was just about one of the most panoramic views you can uh, wish to see. It looked like when I used to go over to like Wyoming and places like that, just a vast open vista of Somerset country, sorry. So we're just in uh, one of the woodlands, we've just come for a walk, Joe said go for a walk around the, the estate and uh, this is a larch woodland, it looks like larch trees to me, the only reason I think it's larch is because larch is one of the few, if, if the only conifer that loses its needles, drops its needles every winter and then comes back green again in the summer, unlike other evergreen conifers like your Scots pines and your cedars and things like that which keep the needles all year round. So you nearly all of this is... all bare. Yeah, and the cones are on that. You've got all the cones on them now, ready to be dropped. Um, but they they will come back green, and and it, they go a lovely colour in the autumn. And you can normally see the larch as you're driving on the road. You'll see them going. They look like they're dying because it goes an orangey brown colour, and you think, oh, the needles are all dying, and that's because they are. But it's not the tree itself dying. And they must do a bit of timber management here, because you can see yeah. by the cut Forest. through here. Yeah. yeah. Well, you would larches used a lot in building with with with. Uh, the, the, the timber frame building and stuff, they use larch for rafters on a lot of... So a huge estate here people, we haven't well, even got, but we just need one thing, warmer temperatures. <laughs> it is so cold. Well, the puddle's frozen out here. So. This is, today's temperature is equivalent of the English Yukon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And there's some deer over there, it's beautiful views. That's you won't see guys, we're way over there. But it's deer and it's windy up here so the mic will be no good. Well there you go. If you're ever wanting an axe or a hatchet as they call it, then check out my channel T8 Outdoors. It was free man. It was a beautiful open vista countryside but by golly that cold wind at the time was biting. You'd think the best place was in that blacksmith's workshop. No, he had both doors open. Nice to see, hopefully I'm going to pop down there and do a film on some of that. Mike's going to be putting a film up on that as well. It's all interesting stuff other than fishing we know, but hey ho guys, I just caught a load of fish, so I feel I can put something random up like this. And there will be more random stuff coming your way soon. See you again. Mm -hmm.